<coughs> Good afternoon and welcome back to the program Touchline is the show this particular afternoon Y25 is the channel my name is Max Olwasike panelists already in the studio to dissect what is happening in Japan as far as rugby world cup which kicked off yesterday is concerned the game that is currently underway Springboks of South Africa against the All Blacks of New Zealand second half just started and 17-3 is the scoreline so far in favor of the New Zealand also known as the All Blacks looking forward to stamp the authority as far as global rugby is concerned and beat the arch rival South Africa it's a setting clash mouth what's in clash of the tournament happening and of course we're gonna get straight into the nitty-gritties of the same Barry Silla is a sports journalist joining us Barry what do you make of rugby world cup so far fourth game underway today's uh, morning games of course yes. Australia beating Fiji, that was an upset to you? Yeah, I expected, I like games where the, uh, the, the minus rise up, but I think uh, teams like Australia, teams like New Zealand, they usually take the time, they build their, 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 their game in between, and then when they catch you, they just finish you. That's what I think even is happening to South Africa. They started well, then two tribes, two quick tries, and, and now they're, they're, they're down against South Africa. So I, I think Fiji started very well uh, in that game against... Uh, uh, is it England? Australia. Fiji, Australia. Against Australia. Fiji against Australia. And then I think totally in the second half they collapsed. And that was not the Fiji I expected. I expected a good fight. But I, for me, it's, uh, the tournament is about four teams. It's New Zealand, Australia, South Africa and England. Any of these four is going to go all the way. The rest, I think, are just adding <coughs> the numbers. That's my view. France against Argentina, 20... 321 that was that was so close <coughs> yeah actually it, it was a game which uh, people i expected to be uh, closely con contested uh, and uh, ex it's exactly what happened so uh, it it is a, it was a tough match uh, people are saying that the new zealand and south africa was uh, expected to be the tough one but that was the tough uh, match even from the scores uh, actually uh, south africa have just uh, scored a try so it's 17-8 right now let's see actually they have converted so it's 17-10 so let's let's see how it, how it pans out uh, till uh, the full time we saw see whether South Africa can, uh, can be able to <coughs> put Africa somewhere in the map that yeah. looks like it's too close can South Africa come from behind and overturn the it, it is tricky because <coughs> sorry the, the game they are playing so far, when you look at it, they have got two major problems. They cannot hold on to the ball. They are losing the ball too quickly to New Zealand, and that's how New Zealand is gaining yards on them. If they can <coughs> hold on to possession, be patient with their ball, and try to knock New Zealand off their game, then they are going to win. Because with New Zealand, the moment they go ahead, it's very hard to come back. They don't like to have ball in their back spaces, into their back rows, where South Africa can come in and try to equalize from them. For them, the moment they're in the danger zone, they kick the ball away from the danger zone, and then they try to go ahead with it. For South Africa, they are fumbling the ball too much. If they can lose that, then it's going to be a very good end of the game. <coughs> Sorry. General standards with regards to Rugby World Cup, I know Kenya missed out on qualifying to Japan, but do you think it's a big setback for Kenya missing in action and not taking part? When you look at the 16 teams in this World Cup, you look at the preparation levels and the investment that the federations put in, it makes, makes you understand why these teams in the first place have, uh, are in the World Cup. And remember, yeah. these teams have been back to back in this top uh, championship. Some of them have been, have been playing tests. So it tells you that rugby, is a, uh, rugby like any other sport is about investment, is about development from, from young structures. The problem with countries like Kenya uh, is that we, lack to, we, we don't really invest in, 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 in proper structures and this is going to be a problem in the near future because yeah. now it means <coughs> some of uh, we, we will be seeing the obviously Namibias and South Africa's but yeah. for us we are still going to be way back and, and it's going to be a big problem. Yeah, and actually, you can talk about uh, the uh, our. I think it was in the Repercharge Cup. Then uh, Kenya missed out, and uh, we saw Canada going there, and then Namibia also taking that spot, and Kenya did not have a chance. And we played uh, the likes of Japan. You look at the countries the way they are ranked themselves getting onto the World Cup. You realize that South Africa is it's rated number three in the world. You've got New Zealand, who are the defending champions, right up there. Watch their rugby weekend in, weekend out. Forget now the Rugby World Cup that we are watching. I think for many fans of rugby and who, who follow rugby weekend in, weekend out, you realize that we either follow South African rugby or we follow England rugby, Ireland, and those are the countries that you'll be following weekend in, weekend out. But for us back here at home, <coughs> The good thing I can say we have at the moment is our players don't go outside that much. 
but you realize that they don't go outside very much because of where we are ranked in the world. If we can get a lot of our players going professional, turning professional, playing in the best leagues in the world, then pushing a team to the World Cup is not an easy deal. You look at South Africa, most of their players play at home. Almost the whole squad plays at home in a professional setup and it's really, really good for them. If for us we can manage to get onto that level, then now you can say that we are going to the World Cup. <coughs> now, you don't want to qualify for the World Cup. In the last hurdle, you qualify for the World Cup. Then on your first game, you meet New Zealand. You have not even played a <laughs> test match <laughs> for a whole year. And you are meeting New Zealand. Yes, it will be happy we are playing New Zealand. But the type of rugby we can experience at that level is going to be really different. And, and, and as, as Barry is uh, correctly putting it, is that yeah. uh, we need to do more investment, actually. We need to invest more in this sport. Actually, as you are saying, mm -hmm. most of the play, most of our players are not going outside. Mm -hmm. uh, for, well, I think it's because uh, at home here we we have facilities, yes, but they are not enough yeah. uh, to to uh, help the players uh, maybe gain more skills and all that. So I think we need to do more investment uh, from both the government and try to f uh, find sponsorship uh, deals, uh, as uh, Odul Gangla was saying last uh, last weekend. So uh, we need to put more money in this pot and then we can see uh, the levels are going up. Yeah. And uh, talking about the general standards of what is happening in Japan as far as rugby World Cup is concerned, I know Tokyo is also looming, it's around yeah. the corner. Do you think teams will be looking forward to stamp their authority, especially the powerhouses, the giants, heavyweights, New Zealand, you know, South Africa, Fiji, Wales, yeah. England as well, ahead of Tokyo 2020? Yeah, um, uh, usually for some of these teams, it starts from it starts with bang on from day one because you never know what to expect. So if you get an opportunity, just kill it. So I'm expecting the same when England come on to play, uh, and I'm, of course I'm expecting South Africa to come back in case they lose today. Uh, the big guns will always want to stamp the authority early, and and remember they're eyeing each other like the f the top four, and maybe you throw in Samoa and uh, and Fiji. They're eyeing each other yeah. so that uh, if at all. <coughs> If at all they were to meet somewhere, now they can balance it out. But now if you lose and then the others won like two matches, it's going to be difficult. So uh, it's important uh, uh, to start with the bank. Yeah. And yes. rem remember, the first game matters. How you start a tournament, the first game matters. And also remember, this time the World, the World Cup groups, are, almost every group is a group of death. Yes. And you look at this game between South Africa and New Zealand, they are in the same group. They'll have to fight it out to make sure that if New Zealand is stopping the group, then Springbok is right behind them. Yes. Other countries like Canada, they have just come to participate. Yes. I'm 100% sure they are not going to come out with a trophy. But I like Australia. It's a team that many people have not spoken about, but it's a, the, it's a team that can really bring trouble into the World Cup. North Ireland mm -hmm. is also there, a big rugby nation, mm -hmm. and this is a team that can also come in yeah. and trouble people. But we'll also wait to see what England can offer, yeah. because it's been a long time we have not seen the three lines, so we're going to see what they can offer. Yeah, I also think, if, Max, if I may yes. add, there, there, there are teams here who, like in even in the Football World Cup, who, like the Belgians maybe and, 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 the, and uh, the Croatians, like we have now, for example, in this World Cup, the teams that can spring surprises, like yeah. for example, Wales, mm -hmm. Ireland, yeah. and, and, and maybe Argentina. Uh, these are, if you look at the, 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 the six nations, these are teams that yeah. even, even surprise guys like England, like you look at Italy, like you look at Ireland, like you look at France, and France by there, they have a very strong league. There are a lot of top pros from around the world that played over there. So it means, uh, the, the, it still goes to the fact that the big teams will like, if they get a chance to win, they win and then they try to win big. Because yeah. it will determine how they will approach the games in the future. Yeah. And uh, let's talk about, you know, the standout players in this particular championship. I know there are a lot of individual names that are likely to determine the outcome and probably general win of the entire championship. So, Robert, do you think there is possibility that individual brilliance will play out? Just like, you know, Kenya, we've seen it when they are featuring uh, at the you know, HSBC World 7 Series, you know, standout names like Colin Sinjera, who is one of the overall try scorers globally yeah. Yeah. Uh, determines and you know carries the national flag do you think as far as rugby world cup is concerned in japan standout individual names will 
play out or it's about the teamwork? Actually, with the 15 rugby, it's more of teamwork because you cannot be alone in that team. At seven, one player, you can struggle two defenders and go all the way. But with the 15s, you realize that you have very many on the field of play. How you are set up as a team is the one that is going to matter. I think with rugby 15, past the coach who is at the same bin, it is the captain of the team. How the captain sets his team are going out there is how you are good at it. So you remember the different roles that they are going to play. So you realize that with New Zealand, they are very good at the scrum. They know when they come to a scrum how they are going to handle that and the kind of player that they are going to have. Who is your best kicker on the field? You are going to use some of those players. And I think teamwork is the one that will play a key role in that. Actually, uh, as, as Robert is saying, uh, for, for 15s, you, you cannot uh, really be able to compare the 7s and 15s because as, 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 as a team, if you cannot be able to defend well, uh, you are going to get beaten. And uh, the way uh, we have so many players in the field, in the field of play, if you can't uh, be able to set uh, your team, uh, uh, all the 15 uh, players on the field, then you are poised to, to, to lose a match uh, in a very, very simple way. <coughs> And uh, maybe right now, as we speak, South Africa against New Zealand still, score, 17, uh, still 10. 17 to mm -hmm, 10. Mm -hmm. New Zealand leading. Remember, this is a 15th rugby game, not 7s that we are used to, you know, taking short period of time. 15 takes closer to 40 minutes, 40 40 minutes, minutes so per half, yeah. 80 <laughs> minutes overall. It's just almost the same football. Yeah. We were discussing earlier on before you came that, you know, Rugby, really rugby, mm. is 15, yeah. and 7 <laughs> is cosmetics. You yeah, agree? Yeah. yeah, I agree. 15 <laughs> is, is, is the... Where, uh, this is where rugby was born. 15 rugby, this is the core of rugby. Even some of the 7 players still return to 15, so especially when you get older, uh, yeah. you, you return to 15. So I think 7 is more of excitement, it's more you know, entertainment and uh, flashy stuff, but 15 is the core of rugby. You learn everything about the basics of the game, so yeah. 15 sack for me is where rugby was born, yes. Basics of the game. Also, Robert, last weekend you, in your interview with Ganglo Dwori, he had hinted to you that, of course, new coach is coming on board. Paul Finney now taking over as the technical director of all rugby entities locally. Is it high time that now the man steer the national team to another level so that, you know, during these global show pieces, like what is happening in Japan, Kenya can participate as well? I think uh, the, the, the major thing is the resources that he's going to have at, at his disposal because uh, a, a man coming from New Zealand has got a lot of connections. You realize that for the whole of last year, we did not have any test match happening in the country. So we'll need to go back to those test matches. You realize now Kenya is playing Zimbabwe. Uh, for the Victoria Cup in Nakuru. Those are the kind of matches that the rugby fraternity needs. But at the end of the day, are they going to offer him good resources? Are they going to offer him everything that he wants so that he can make the team? And if he's be given that chance, then it, it is going to be happening. And you realize right now that the Kenya Rugby Union, it's a quiet federation, and meaning when they are quiet, then they are working. When there's a lot of noise, they are not working. So what they are doing at the moment is bringing in a new coach, give these boys a test match, develop our university rugby, develop our college and high school rugby, because this is going to be, these are actually our feeder system onto the national team. I don't think there's any other sport in Kenya that has a feeder system from the youth level more than rugby. Rugby, I think, is the one that has a high school, university up to the top level and if he can be given those resources then he can know that which kind of players he needs to get onto the team and we can move on to the next level and uh, you know several foreign best coaches have been at the helm of the national team before fredo pender we mentioned paul true we mentioned mike friday the rugby union parted ways uh, with them owing to the reasons best known to themselves do you think if kenya managed to hold on to a coach like you know, Paul True, then right now we will be talking about different thing in terms of growth of 
rugby in the country. Actually, because he meant well for <laughs> exactly. the sport. Yeah, it, yeah it's and it's even Mike good. Friday. Yeah, it's let's start good. with Mike Friday, also known as Okuyo. <laughs> he's in charge of the US right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. He's actually is uh, in charge of the US right now. So I think um, the good thing is uh, uh, we uh, actually there is a score a penalty goal from for South Africa. South so Africa seems like they are coming. Yeah, they are coming back so into the game very well. Yeah, they are, they are up for the fights. So I, I, it's always good, uh, not really mentioning names, but just get hold on to your best uh, best uh, best uh, coaches best players although players you know now they are, you are getting older you have to give uh, pave way for the younger blood mm -hmm. but for coaches we need to get hold of the people who are putting in uh, some quality uh, uh, input into the sport and uh, as robert was saying give them uh, whatever they need if it's resources fine if it's sponsors get get, get the sponsors for them uh, uh, and if we can be able to hold uh, to, to this kind of uh, of uh, talent uh, coaching ways then uh, we we can be able to be featuring in the, in the in the in the world cups each and every time so the best thing is make sure we have these resources uh, give give the coaches the uh, uh, enough facilitation enough, exactly facilitation in order to carry out their work and then we can see the the, the, the level of uh, rugby uh, going up but without uh, having the best uh, the, the best coaches is not enough if you don't give them that uh, uh, the facilities and the, the the maybe the resources they need then there's no need to have them they'll go away and uh, find uh, uh, places where they can get the resources that they need but Barry, I know you will agree with me that uh, despite, uh, besides facilitation in terms of giving a coach all he needs at his disposal, just like Osoro Robert put it, I know structures are also paramount and yeah. the Federation yeah. has to put in place, you know, uh, structures, especially at the grassroots, where I understand there is much untapped yeah. potential. Paul True meant well for the sport and he's been closing, uh, closely monitoring yeah. the progress of the game locally yeah. and even when Kenya meets against South Africa. Mike Friday, sorry, he, yeah. he he always has some, you know, positive remarks mm. about a few names mm. locally mm. in terms of, you know, players featuring for the national side, Shuja. Mm. Did we lack goodwill in the first place to retain him? I, I think, uh, yes, we lacked goodwill. And another thing that destroys our game, or, or to be particular about rugby, is that when politics uh, chips in then now we have a big problem some people start bringing the argument of money it's too expensive to to sustain a foreign coach or we, we have enough uh, people down here but i think that is a very short-sighted argument we need to <coughs> we should have retained somebody like mike friday or guys like paul true who have experience uh, <coughs> in and out of of the game and particularly because they had a vision <coughs> sorry the vision was to build rugby from the bottom going up and, and to this end, we need uh, elements of development. You know, like in, 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 in like in South Africa, Eastern Province or Western Province, they have people we call development coaches. In Kenya, some time back, uh, in the game of cricket, we used, to, we used to have development coaches in the Coast Province and, and, and Rift Valley Province. So these people, they build players from that end, and then they will feed into the national team. This is what probably rugby lacks. If rugby had a good structure, maybe, let's say, we have good rugby uh, from Western Kenya, like Kisumu and Nakuru, and then the coast, and then Nairobi, obviously. Then, if we had a good development structure and development coaches and development managers, then we'll, we'll not have, be having such an argument. So, probably we'll be in the World Cup right now. Yes. And the Victoria Cup in Nakuru is happening. Kenya yeah. up against Zimbabwe at Nakuru mm -hmm. Athletic Club. And you know, it's all about 15s, and I know the atmosphere. In Nakuru, as far as matters rugby is concerned, is electric. Mm. Kenya, up against Zimbabwe, is a team that has been almost bringing problems to the Simbas. Can Kenya redeem themselves this particular afternoon? They can, they can. They're actually playing at home. Remember, we are Kenya, Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Uganda. We have already had two wins against, uh, one win against Uganda, we've had a uh, two win against Zambia and now against Zimbabwe. So here at home, we have to give it our best shot and Zimbabwe is one of the biggest countries uh, uh, rugby in Africa. So Kenya testing themselves against Zimbabwe is the best thing that can happen. And also, you gotta give it to these uh, boys who are working at the Federation because they promised to take rugby outside of Nairobi. And uh, I think it's the first time that you're having a test match in Nakuru. And Nakuru is a very big home when it comes to rugby. Most of the rugby players hail from Nakuru. So 
rugby at Nakuru Athletic Club today is going to be fantastic. And you watching the World Cup, plus you playing with your own boys at the team, is going to be big for us. And I expect these boys to go out there and prove themselves because they can see the kind of teams that went to the World Cup, they had a chance to go to the World Cup. So if we have a shot at the Olympics because the qualifiers are coming, this is the time to make your case. Odur Ngagla tried to his level best according to your own assessment since he took over from Richard Omuel. I, I think the, the, you, 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 you'll just look at what has happened so far, what has happened with the team so far. I think the major one was the pulling out of sponsors from the rugby, and now we have got sponsors coming back into the fraternity. You saw Stanwick Bank add their money onto the series circuit, and that was a good one for them. You've got Tasca coming in as a short sponsor. That's a good one for you. You've got still Bidico still sticking with you. They signed a broadcasting deal, which is uh, already happening this time round. That's a big plus for the Federation. The, the major part will be, can you retain them? And for a long term, because you don't want to have sponsors coming in for just a short duration of time and then they are gone. The moment they stay with you for a very long time, that is the moment you'll see your rugby improving to greater heights. And if they don't stay with you, then that's a problem. But so far, so good. They have done their best. Barry Silla, ahead of Safari 7's kicking off, I've seen before several teams coming from beyond to take part in the championship. Yeah. But of yeah. late, in the yeah. most recent times, even yeah. let's talk about last year's championship. It yeah. lacked flames, it lacked spice, because mm. you know the teams that were participating are sort of you know, mm. minos, not yeah. heavyweights yeah. to spice up the yeah. championship. This yeah. time round, mm. are we are we are we looking forward to different scenarios? Should we? I think, uh, like my friend has said, uh, with the coming in of a dwarf gangler, there's a new belief, and then also now we have you've just seen the teams that are coming in. There's the the the, the, the team from South Africa that has won, I think, the championship like three times. He's now coming in as well. So we expect a lot of. Uh, electric atmosphere in, in, in safari seven I mean, remember this is one of the biggest events in the in in, in the calendar of rugby so yes. uh when you see some of these teams coming back it means there's some new belief they want to compete they want to showcase what africa has got and 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 for kenya it's a very big plus and for Kario this is a big plus so probably what needs to happen is to spread the game again in maybe apart from nakuru maybe take it to kisumu and get more hev heavy heavyweight teams to come on board to raise the the, the level of, of the sport locally. I, I think also for the Safari 7, because it's usually mostly a cut and razor to the Dubai 7s that usually kicks up in November, one major hindrance that the Safari 7s has is a stadium. We don't have a very good world-class rugby stadium for that series. If, we, if they can marshal their forces and build a very good stadium, then you can have really big teams coming on to the Safari 7s because they know the moment we touch down in Nairobi, Kenya, we are planning for Dubai, yeah. and they are using Safari 7s for that. So if we can get a 15,000, 20,000 seat at the RFUA, yeah. good classic stadium, yeah. I can tell you teams will be coming. Because back in the day, we had teams like All Blacks coming in for the Safari 7s. Yeah. We had Auckland coming in. So those are big teams that can come in and actually change the value of the Safari 7s. Fred, open over to you now. I know the battle of controversy is still with the venue. There are people who still thinking that Kasaran <laughs> should continue hosting Safari 7s. But you know, RFUA grounds along Gong Road is a traditional venue for Safari 7s. It's yeah. strategically located mm -hmm. and you know, people will prefer going along Gong Road and like going at Kasaran, which looks vast and vast. probably <laughs> wouldn't accommodate the fans available. Your thoughts? I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's up to the, uh, to the the union to to, to to give this uh, kind of uh, directions where we should we should we use the the, the, the sevens and all that so I, I don't think it's a it's a big a really big issue what we need to do is as Robert was saying is marshalling uh, we marshal for, for funds and build a very yeah. good a good a good facility just for rugby like now we we have the the union uh, the, the union uh, pitch uh, uh, along Angong Road. So we need to uh, have a good classic uh, stadium yeah. for, for rugby. And I know uh, uh, we, we can marshal fans and, uh, and, um, uh, and build one. Because you remember there's a, a time the government, although they have not built the football stadiums that they were saying, uh, we can, uh, we can, the, the, I, th I think Odur Gangla is, uh, for him now, bringing back the sponsors and all, uh, and all other stakeholders. 
weak and martial for fans and, and, and get a very, very good stadium. And as he was saying, yeah. Yeah, we've seen uh, him, he's, he's trying to uh, at least, right, uh, like right now we have a test match in Nakuru, he's trying to uh, take rugby around the country, not uh, at a specific place. So I think he's done a good, uh, a good job uh, up to now. Uh, of course, there are ups and downs. Uh, we had a series that uh, was concluded some two weeks ago, and it was uh, people came, people came in and uh, watched rugby. So for him, uh, up to now, his, his, his report card is uh, well placed, if I can put it. So yeah, you are impressed I, with this. I, 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 I think think exactly. With the uh, with the venues, with the venues, Maso taking it to to Kasarani, I think. First, they'll have to be sure that they have got the fans numbers that can actually take you to Kasarani because you don't want to change it. Or you, I think it was time it was back at the Ngong Road, came to Nyayo and then moved to Kasarani. That time, I think the fans had showed that there are numbers there who can come to watch this game outside there. But after that, I think people, the fans went down and nothing happened. So for them to move out, to move the tournament to Kasarani, they have to get really be sure that we have got numbers coming onto the stadium. But without the numbers, I think the RFU is the best place to be. Small, intimate, the fans love it. Most of the people going, who attend rugby attend it at Ngong Road, and it's the best place to have it there, and people come out and enjoy the game. Definitely. Of course, that has been the talk with regards to reviewing Rugby World Cup. It continues in Japan. It's happening right now. It's South Africa against 20. New Zealand 2013 13. Mm -hmm. in favor of the New Zealanders. Mm -hmm. And of course, the All Blacks looking forward to stamp the authority as far as global rugby mm -hmm. is concerned. It's a epic clash. And I think, can we say unanimously that uh, the entire Rugby World Cup in Japan, this is the version of what the final should look like. <laughs> So I think so, yeah. Because I don't think we will witness a scenario where <laughs> two heavyweights are playing against each other like maybe what is final. happening right maybe now. Maybe the final. Maybe in the final the two can uh, meet again, but we will be looking forward to see how that pan out. Of course, we're taking a short break. We will come up next with the fans on where I discuss local and international football. Remember KPL fixtures on card national Super League as well and even the talking points as far as football headlines, the players who are injured but you know the those who are responsible to take good care of their medication have failed to do so and even the fixtures for the weekend don't go stay tuned touchline is the show my name is max alosiki <laughs>